we are going to do the scientific method SpongeBob style today. Um, there are, I think, four, yes, four scenarios that we're going to look at and discuss. Um, this does get a little bit confusing because there are the independent and the dependent variables listed in here. So if you need any extra help with that, just let me know and we'll talk about it. Okay, but again, I want to remind you, I don't expect that you know this stuff uh, like the back of your hand by the time we're finished with this. Okay, this is something that we're going to introduce in sixth grade and we're going to work on in seventh grade and eighth grade. So by the time that you leave me, you will go to high school knowing the difference between these two variables. So don't worry too much about it. Um, but if you're totally confused, let me know. Number one, Mr. Krabs wants to make Bikini Bottom a nicer place to live. He has created a new sauce that he thinks will reduce the production of gas associated with Krabby Patties from the Krusty Krab. He recruits 100 customers with a history of gas problems. He has 50 of them, Group A, eat Krabby Patties with the new sauce. The other 50, Group B, eat Krabby Patties with the sauce that looks like the new sauce, but is really just a mixture of mayonnaise and food coloring. Both groups were told that they were getting the sauce that would reduce the gas problem. After, for two hours after eating the Krabby Patties, 30 customers in Group A reported having fewer gas problems, and eight customers in Group B reported having fewer gas problems. So, Mr. Krabs is testing out a sauce, and he's seeing if it actually makes a difference in gas production after eating Krabby Patties. Uh, a says, what would be a constant in this experiment? So remember that constants are things that are kept the same between different trials. So the constant could be, one constant could be, that they're eating Krabby Patties. Let's see, all members of each group are eating Krabby Patties. Um, there are a bunch of different constants you can think, if you can think of any other ones, put them in there. If you're not sure about them, let me know and we'll talk about it and see if they are in this scenario. But that's just one that's pretty obvious. Uh, B, what is the independent or eye control variable? So what did Mr. Crab, Mr. Krabs do? What was the difference in the different, in group A's Krabby Patties and group B's Krabby Patties? It was the type of sauce. Remember, both groups got the sauce, got a sauce, and were told that it was the new sauce, um, but only one group actually had the new sauce, group A. Group B actually just had, it's called a, oh gosh, what's it called? A placebo. It, people, they think, group B thought it was the actual thing, but it's actually just a, a made-up thing. It's the fake sauce. So he was in control of the type of sauce he used. The dependent or the measured variable then, what was he measuring? What was the point of giving them that certain type of sauce? The dependent variable then would be the amount of gas produced. Slash, we'll say, as it says right here, gas production. Or, or gas problems, it says here. So the amount of gas produced is what he's trying to test, or and that's reported as having gas problems. D, what should Mr. Krebs' conclusion be? Well, it says here that 30 in Group A had fewer gas problems. Only eight had fewer gas problems in B. Group A had the new sauce, so they should have had fewer gas problems if it worked. And Group B had a pretend sauce, so if they had fewer gas problems, it was just coincidence. So since way more people, 30 out of the 50, had fewer gas problems in A, and only 8 out of the 50 had fewer gas problems in B, Mr. Krabs can conclude that the new sauce helps reduce gas problems. And E, why do you think 8 people in Group B reported feeling better? This is up to you. This is a why do you think question. I want to know what you think. Um, so I'm going to leave that blank. But one reason could be, if I just think about this, if I tell you I'm giving you something that will help you feel better and you take it, you should be thinking, okay, whenever I take this, I should feel better. So maybe the eight people in group B said they felt better because they thought that they should be feeling better after they took that, uh, ate that certain kind of sauce. I don't know. That's up to you. It's what do you think? 
Number two, SpongeBob notices that his pal Gary is suffering from slimatosis, which occurs when a snail shell develops a nasty slime and gives off a horrible odor. SpongeBob's friend Patrick tells him that rubbing seaweed on the shell is the perfect cure. SpongeBob decides to test this cure by rubbing Gary with seaweed every day for one week. After a week of treatment, the slime is gone and Gary smells great. What's the initial problem? So what was happening? Well, it says that Gary has slimatosis and he smelled really bad. So the problem is Gary smells bad. But then B, as I said before a million times, you usually write the problem as a question. So how can we write this as a question? There are different ways you can write it. Yours may be different than what I put. I'm going to say, why? One thing we could say is, why does Gary smell bad? We could say later on, it says that SpongeBob's friend Patrick tells him rubbing seaweed on his shell would help him. So we could, our problem, our question could be, will rubbing seaweed on Gary's shell make him smell better? There could be different questions that you come up with that. It's up to you. Um, C, what is the independent variable, the thing that I control? Well, what's SpongeBob going to do? He says he's going to test the cure by rubbing Gary with seaweed every day for one week. So the independent variable would be seaweed. The dependent variable is the results. So after a week, what was he supposed to, what were the results supposed to be or what's he looking for? Uh, he wanted to know if the slime was gone, if Gary smelled any better. So, slime, I don't say smell, either one of those. And E, what should SpongeBob's conclusion be? It says here, after a week of treatment, the slime is gone and Gary smells great. After he put seaweed on his shell. So the conclusion could be that seaweed does cure slimatosis. And if you come up with a different conclusion, put that, and we'll talk about it if you are unsure. Next, Larry the Lobster was told that a new muscle cream claims to double a person's muscle power when used during workouts. He decided to buy the product and test the claim. He chooses twin flounders, flotsam, and jetsam to help him out. Larry develops a special marshmallow weightlifting program for the two fish. He meets with them once every day for a period of two weeks and keeps track of their results. Before each session, Flotsam's arms and back are lathered in the muscle cream, while Jetson's arms and backs are lathered with regular lotion. The results are shown in the table below. So Flotsam gets the muscle cream that's supposed to help uh, help him lift, help increase muscle power, and Jetson doesn't get that. So when they start out, Flotsam can lift eight can do 18 reps, Jetson can do 16. After a week of the cream. Flotsam can do 24 reps. After a week of lotion, Jetsam can do 22. After two weeks, Flotsam is 33. He has the cream that's supposed to help. And Jetsam is up to 31. He does not have the cream. So the independent variable is what I control or what uh, I'm in control of, what I do, what I change. So the difference between Flotsam and Jetsam is the muscle cream. Flotsam gets the muscle cream, Jetsam doesn't. The dependent variable is the results. So what are we looking for at the end? That would be the number of reps. How much each person can lift. However you want to say it. And what should Larry's conclusion be? Did Flotsam go up? Yep. Did Jetson go up though? Yes, so we need to look at the difference. So Flotsam could already lift more than Jetsam. Here, let's, let's see the difference between week one and initial amount. If we do 24 minus 18, that's 6. If we do 22 minus 16, that's 6. So the change is the same. It's 6 for Flotsam, 6 for Jetsam. 33 minus 24, that's 9. 31 minus 22 is also 9. So the, the difference between each of these is the same. So was there really any change? Not really, no, nothing significant. So the muscle cream does not help.
Just a gimmick. They're trying to get your money. All right, number four. Last one. Sandy believes that adding acorn juice to a cactus will cause it to sprout more spines. She tests this idea out by placing three cacti in a similar location around her dome. She adds the same amount of acorn juice to plants two and three, but doesn't add any acorn juice to plant one. Her findings are found in the table below. So, cactus, uh, cactus one, she did not add anything to it. She didn't do anything different. Uh, it starts out with the two and three she did. So, cactus one starts out with ten. After a week, it's sprouted five. It's up to fifteen. After two weeks, there's a difference of, what is that, eight. So, after adding stuff to cactus two and three, we have 11 to 19. That's a difference of eight. 19 to 38, that doubled. Uh, that's a difference of 19, though. 10 to 17, that's 7. 17 to 47, that's 30. So that's quite a bit. So the independent variable, what I control, what did Sandy do? What was the difference in uh, cactus 1 and cactus 2 and 3? Was acorn juice. She added acorn juice to 2 and 3, but she didn't add any acorn juice to cactus 1. The dependent variable is the results. So what are we counting? What are we trying to figure out at the end? We are talking about uh, if you add acorn juice, the cactus will have more spines. So the dependent variable would be the number of spines. Cactus. And see what should she, what should she conclude? Um, here, there's a difference of. Let's just start from the beginning to the end. Let's do that difference. Twenty-three minus ten is thirteen. Uh, number two, 38 minus 11 is 27. And then 47 minus 10 is 37. So there's a significantly uh, greater number of spines in cactus two and three that got the acorn juice than cactus one that didn't get any acorn juice. So I would say that her conclusion should be that the, cac the acorn juice helps increase the number of spines. come up with a different conclusion that's fine just let me know and we'll talk about it and see if that works all right so again I left E blank on number one because I want you to answer that um, based on what you think I told you what I thought and or some one thing that I thought um, but it's up to you you put what you think the rest of them are completed if you have any questions let me know this will be on classroom for you to look at and I hope to see you guys soon